All right. Good day, everyone, and thank you for joining today's e-seminar covering physical security solutions for corrections. SenStar is the world leader for integrated perimeter intrusion detection sensors, security and video management software, video analytics, and personal duress man down system. My name is Zach Geiser. I am SenStar's A and E and Corrections Business Development Manager for the U.S. And today I am joined by Todd Brisois, Product Manager here at SenStar. Uh, before I turn things over to Todd, I want to invite everyone to submit any questions you come up with during the webinar um, using the question section on the GoToMeeting portal on your screen. And for any project design, product specification, or project specification, budgeting, or te technology application questions, uh, please feel free to reach out to us directly uh, via email or phone. Uh, I also encourage you to visit our corrections use case area on sensestar.com. Here you can find additional information regarding how our technology can be applied to prevent escapes, detect and deter contraband, keep staff safe, manage incidents, and control movement within the correctional facility. I also want to mention all of our e-seminars are recorded, including today's corrections focused presentation. And you can be you can find this presentation by going to the uh, e-seminar e portal on our homepage. Uh, so thank you ever again, everyone again for your time and interest. And uh, without further ado, Todd, let's talk physical security solutions for corrections. So good morning, everyone, and thanks for your interest in uh, this week's uh, e-seminar. And uh, hopefully, all your uh, friends and neighbors aren't being too heavy with Netflix or other streaming services. Otherwise, we'll have an, a bandwidth issue and everyone's going to be uh, messed up with losing audio and stuff. So let's, uh, let's just jump into it and hope for the best. So as far as the agenda goes, here's what we'll be uh, covering during the session. So a bit about SenStar, but don't worry, I promise uh, to do this in more than two quick slides. And we'll talk about your unique security challenges and, of course, our solutions uh, that can help with them. I will also talk more specifically about each product in terms of technologies and features. And then lastly, we'll cover integration since this is an extremely important part of uh, the security solution as a whole. Because really without it, it's simply a mess of hardware and software that's really impossible to manage. And if we have time at the end, uh, we'll uh, try to do a quick Q&A. Otherwise, if there are any questions that anyone's asked throughout the uh, presentation, uh, feel um, you'll you'll see an email response at some point uh, with uh, someone from Sensor with uh, with an answer that'll cover all the questions that are missed during that Q and A. So a little bit about us. Uh, so we have our offices all around the world, with headquarters being located in Canada. Uh, manufacturing is both in Canada and the U.S. Uh, with sales and support located throughout the globe, so it's all easy access. And ultimately, we sell to thousands of customers all over the world and pretty much in most countries. We also have a large staff covering every aspect of our business in every time zone. And I'm also happy to report um, that we're still all working through this tough pandemic period. But of course, in an isolated fashion, either remotely or in production, we're even running multiple shifts in order to maintain our uh, social distancing while we continue to build the products that you're buying and uh, that you need, of course. So Sensor is also in a really good financial position, which certainly has helped the company during these trying times. But more importantly for our customers, it provides security, no pun intended, that will weather this current storm and will continue to support all of our customers today and in the future. Now Sensor has been around for about 40 years. And as such, we really have a proven track record with our product reliability and its support if and when required. And we've also got uh, our own uh, GSA schedule for the folks in the US, which, uh, as most of you know, makes procurement way easier. So 35 of those 40 years uh, really has been uh, supporting uh, our correctional facilities all over the world. Our products, they're used in every single Canadian federal correctional site, as well as over 80% of the US federal correction sites and many of the uh, state and private sites as well. 
Other countries that we're also engaged with and winning are uh, Germany, UK, Brazil, Mexico, and that's uh, really just to name a few. Now the corrections market has some very unique challenges that no other vertical uh, really has to contend with. You're not trying to keep people out, you're trying to keep people in. And what you're trying to keep out is contraband, which is a monumental task all by itself. Uh, corrections really requires a multi-layered security approach, whether that means uh, multiple physical security barriers, uh, as well as multiple sensors or other technologies. Now, the way that corrections is similar to other verticals is that you're always understaffed, which, and probably more, more so in your case, which makes everything that much more of a challenge. So the use of technology can really uh, give you some precise information on in order to get a, you know, things running very smoothly and safe, uh, safer in operation on the site. Now, there's many other factors to add to these challenges, whether it's uh, government regulations that almost always adds cost and in some cases it really dilutes your uh, manpower, or maybe budget concerns that affect the replacement of really badly outdated security equipment, which is uh, supposed to keep the public and uh, the staff safe. Now overcrowding has also been an issue and if anything it's probably getting worse and that really wreaks havoc on uh, the inmate to CO ratio and has the potential of causing uh, or be a, a trigger for causing uh, riot outbreaks. Not to mention all the sites are created equally from minimum security uh, facilities to the supermax um, which all have their unique requirements. Now, contraband is also a significant issue. And as concerns lie with uh, who and what is going in and out of those facilities at all times. All this being said, your security equipment is really only a benefit if it's configured properly, uh, set up properly to offer the biggest value. And the CEOs know how to use it. And its maintenance know how to keep it running which ultimately means the supplier training and support needs to be exemplary. Now let's take a look at some of the uh, various use cases that are unique to correctional sites and what products, at least at a high level, would be suited. We'll cover the products in uh, more detail once we've uh, worked through these use cases. So the first use case I'll touch today is the one that everyone sees, the facility's uh, outer perimeter and or the uh, sterile zone area, also called the dog run and my favorite, the rabbit run. Um, these certainly have regulations that, need to, uh, that you need to abide by because it's really their final defense in preventing escapes from happening in the first place to secure that public safety as well as keeping contraband out. Now these perimeter configurations are going to vary based on uh, many factors including security threats, uh, single or double fenced areas, um, actual fence height, uh, additional toppers like uh, razor wire, for instance, um, also lots of lighting and all using a multi-layered security approach. Now we have multiple cable sensing products as well as microwave and VMS software uh, to help this layered security approach for corrections. So from our lowest cost flex zone cable, base solution which mounts on the fence to detect vibrations. We've also got fiber optic uh, sensor cables like the FP1150 which provide the same type of fence protection but in a, a more uh, non-conductive or lightning immune cable. Now our Omnitrax uh, buried sensors cable solution which provides more of a volumetric detection and uh, or from in the ground to establish that covert security uh, perimeter. And also our X-Field solution, which is an electrostatic sensing product when there's a need for um, exceptional containment because it's very narrow and the need to protect against extreme heights. Then for uh, backfill areas where none of the other technologies are really well suited, we have our ultrawave product line, which uh, uses microwave frequencies to detect the volumetric disturbances. And then lastly, we have our Symphony video management system, which 
connects to the video camera network in order to manage all the camera streams available. And it also uses analytics to display and alert in a more manageable way for the COs to be a, a bit more effective. Now, Symphony is also our aggregation software, which I'll talk more in detail uh, later in the presentation, but it brings all the sensor data, and I'm not only talking about cameras, into one central processing station, which can really provide um, even more efficiencies. And like I said, we'll discuss that a little bit later in more detail. Now, next up is the Sallyport use case. And this is certainly a um, unique uh, situation all in its own right. Um, from a requirement perspective, it has requirements of a, of a perimeter, but with the added complexities of uh, multiple gates due to the need for uh, ingress and egress uh, of the facility. Now, this area's complexity requires more complex configuration and requires in all instances a mix of technologies as well as uh, a layered approach. So for the fixed fence portions, this is, this is really just a continuation of the sensor cable technology used for, for the rest of the perimeter that comes into the Sally port. When we get into the non-fixed portions, uh, such as gates, our wireless gate sensor is really well suited for this. Where whether they're sliding gates uh, commonly found at Sally ports or even horizontally or vertically sliding type, or really any possible um, type of gate that you might have. Now, UltraWave is also great for these areas uh, between the inner and outer gates as a, more of a second layer uh, security within that selling port. And of course, we have Symphony, as I mentioned before, with all the cameras located Sally ports, it should really help the COs to maintain uh, better control of these areas. Now, perimeters, will always have gates and likely various types of them throughout the facility, whether they're sliding or swing gates and also require security coverage. So there's various methods or products uh, that can be used to cover these gates in either a single layer or multi-layer implementation. So if you see at the top, we have a flex zone which basically routes the cable in a certain fashion in order to provide that gate protection. And then we also have it in the middle showing the uh, wireless gate sensor, which can just be mounted at the center of the gate. And then of course, using uh, microwave devices to cover any potential uh, openings. Now, any of these can be used, as I mentioned, on their own in a single layer approach or a mixture of these technologies for more of a multi-layer approach. So that pretty much covers the detection requirements of the outer perimeter of the facilities. So let's move on to protecting your staff, which is key. Without staff, things will get crazy really fast. So your corrections officers, they face multiple threats while working at the facility. And that's whether it's more of a personal issue or a personal health issue that comes up or maybe an attack by one of the inmates. And in most regions now, they require some sort of uh, duress system to be used by all COs at correctional facilities. And Sensestar has multiple products that help cover this requirement to protect the staff. And whether that's using um, an ultrasonic technology such as our PaaS system, or our more modern RF-based technology uh, such as the flare locating system. Now, both systems have their specific, specific advantages and uh, um, some of which uh, I do list above. So let's talk in more detail about uh, the sensor product specifically. So I'm not gonna read off everything on these product slides or I'm just gonna lose everyone as their eyes gla quickly glaze over. So I'll stick with pointing to the main aspects of the products. So first on deck, we've got the flex zone. So this is our copper sensor cable based solution. So this can be routed along fences. As you can see, here's the flex zone cable and here's the processor. Now each processor is capable of energizing and managing up to about 600 meters of cable. 
And this cable can be divided into a maximum of up to 60 reporting zones. And we can locate intrusions within three meters. So this product's ideal for like small and medium sized sites where you simply install as many processors as are required to cover that perimeter. Now, in terms of key benefits, this is our most cost effective solution, which is really super easy to install on virtually any type of fence structure. One of its compelling features is the reduced need for infrastructure when multiple processors are required, since it uses that sensing cable to basically deliver the power and uh, communications to uh, uh, your neighboring four other processors that are needed to cover that extra perimeter. Now this really reduces the additional infrastructure required because you don't need that at each processor and it does reduce the civil costs as well. Um, because this is a ranging system, which basically means we're, we're able to uh, locate disturbances accurate, accurately along the uh, perimeter. This basically or drastically improves our ability to minimize weather related nuisance alarm because the system is able to look at the uh, distributed disturbances along the perimeter and make more intelligent decisions on what really constitutes an alarm. And what that does in the end is it maximizes our probability of detection and it maintains that, you know, the system's operational confidence uh, with that COs are, who are monitoring these systems. Next up is the fiber patrol, the FP1150. So this is another sensor cable based product, which in this case also attaches to the fence, as you can see in the image, but it uses a fiber optic cable as its sensing cable. So this can be used on everything from fences, uh, walls, and even in buried applications. So the benefits with using fiber optics is the FP1150 processor, it can cover up to 100 kilometers with one continuous cable. So it makes it very attractive for extremely large perimeters. And all this while achieving intrusion detections or locations of up to four meters. So because this is also a ranging system, we're able to use that same weather algorithm uh, to increase that uh, functionality and reliability of the system in, in all weather conditions. Now, one of the other significant benefits of using fiber optics is we eliminate the potential of induced voltages on the fence in the event that um, a power line were to drop down on the fence, or more importantly for the corrections vertical, at least in some regions, it's, it's immune to lightning and EMI since there's really no electrically conductive type materials in the cable and the processor itself is mounted somewhere indoors. So it's outside of the, uh, the elements. Now worth mentioning also is typically fiber optic cable have multiple fibers within that cable. So with these uh, spare fibers, you can use them for other things, uh, such as, uh, let's say, carrying the data and communications for your perimeter security cameras or any other type sensor that could be on or, or near that perimeter. And if the FP1150 uses a, a secondary fiber cable, and that's one of the secondary strands that are within that one same cable, um, you can configure the system for cut immunity. And this gives you the protection uh, of the full perimeter, even when the cable's cut, which is a nice advantage. So Xfield is a, it's a, it's a very unique product. It's been around for some time now. Now it uses electrostatic sensing through this array, which you can see in the, in the diet or in the picture, um, through this array of wires where some of them are generating electrostatic uh, field and others uh, sense that electrostatic field. Now, when someone approaches the perimeter to within that detection range, they affect or change the properties in that location with respect to the electrostatic field, and ultimately they get detected. Now, the key benefits here are that it provides a very narrow detection field of about one meter on either side of the wiring, uh, wiring array. So, 
it's really well contained and can be used in in areas where you don't have that much room, such as sterile areas, for instance, where there's a really narrow path between those two parallel fences. Now, the system can also be configured to reach heights of up to 24 feet, which makes it really difficult to defeat. It virtually eliminates the use of vehicles or ladders propping up against the structure, or even you know jumping or vaulting of any sorts. Even, even Olympic uh, pole vaulters wouldn't succeed since the world record is at just over 20 feet so we have a four feet advantage on them and there's always going to be areas in your perimeter where they're they're not really conducive to running sensor cable so we have other solutions to cover them so for gates uh, you can run the flex zone sensor cable like i mentioned before but a better option is our wireless gate sensor which uses the vibration based technology to detect intrusion attempts. Um, and what it does, it communicates wirelessly to a nearby processor. For instance, uh, the Flexone processor. And it also uses a rechargeable battery technology um, to keep it operating. So there's no battery changes required on these. On the microwave front, uh, we have the, multi, um, the UltraWave, which is a digital bi-static microwave sensor. Now it provides coverage for up to 200 meters. Excuse me. Because of the technology used, it's reliable in conditions like, uh, like rain, fog, and snow. And we can also stack them to provide some increased height detection. So, and this is kind of because we have this uh, frequency configuration option that, uh, that the units can be set to so that they don't interfere with one another. Now, OmniTrax is another uh, sensor cable product, but this one is used in covert or buried applications, which is also great for sterile areas or rabbit runs. Um, each processor can cover up to about 800 meters of distance. And since it's a, a ranging product, it locates intrusions with up to one meter of accuracy. So even better than some of our other products. Now, its sensing technology isn't based on vibration, uh, but by uh, volumetric detention, detection, which kind of means a, uh, let's say a rabbit bouncing around in that rabbit run, it won't trigger an alarm. It has to be something a bit more significant. The way it works is the technology uses kind of a leaky cable that transmits a, um, an RF signal, if you will, and a receive cable uh, that receives that same signal. So when a person, and not a rabbit, uh, walks up to that area where the cable's buried, and it's covert, so they don't even know it's there, it changes the environmental characteristics and causes a disturbance in that electromagnetic field, which ultimately causes an alarm from the cable sensing that. And like, similar to the uh, FlexZone system, uh, power and communications are delivered over the cable. So that minimizes the need for this extra infrastructure um, that would be required for other uh, processors. And of course, the added civil costs associated with that. And that's only in situations where you require more than 800 meter coverage and you require multiple processors, but it's a huge advantage to run power and communications over, over the cable. That way only one processor needs to have all that infrastructure. Now for the non-perimeter based products. So this is the flare system. It's our correctionally designed uh, duress system. So this is a really high integrity system. It uses protected RF frequencies uh, to determine the location of a duress event. Uh, and that's whether indoors or outdoors. Now indoors, it can locate up to six meters in, in optimum uh, building conditions. Now, the technology uses wireless receivers, we call them sensor units, um, and they're distributed throughout the facility. Now, in a duress event, all the sensor units data is sent back to the computer running the Flare software, which then runs its uh, advanced pattern recognition engine to accurately uh, determine the, the, the uh, distress events uh, location. Now, each sensor unit is connected to a standard Ethernet network, 
using a POE connection. And this eliminates the need for additional power infrastructure, again, minimizing that total cost of ownership. Now, one of the main benefits of this product, as I mentioned, it uses licensed frequencies. Now, this eliminates the risk of interference from other wireless devices like maybe microwave ovens or even your radios. Because since this is the life safety uh, product, it really needs to work. And it needs to work every single time and absolutely have no hiccups. This is a high integrity system which really has been deployed in various correctional sites over the past 25 years. So we have lots of experience with this product and, uh, and, and the correctional environment. Now, Starnet 2, switching gears into uh, our software, is our feature-rich uh, security management system. And it was specifically created or designed for our PIDs products. So the system manages all the PIDs uh, sensor alarms. And it displays them on a really simple, easy to use uh, map-based interface. Now this software runs on a standard Windows-based PC and can integrate to um, uh, other VMS systems such as our, our own Symphony VMS and other third-party variants of those. Now in simple, it simply works uh, out of the box with our sensors uh, with an easy mouse-based point-and-click fashion, which really minimizes the training required and gives you that full control uh, of all the incoming alarms and you can acknowledge to you can do the acknowledgement and you can all the way up to, let's say, writing incident notes for each uh, occurrence that, are, that happens. Now, something to point out in terms of all of our sensors, as well as our StarNet 2 software and third-party integrations, we can pretty much integrate with everyone since all of our products offer integration through um, various means like uh, our advanced APIs or some simpler ASCII interfaces to our most basic uh, uh, contact IOs. Now for the Symphony Common Out operating platform, this is really the core of everything that SendStar. So at a high level, uh, Symphony is, mo is, uh, is a video management system which of course provides that video display management of any camera on the network uh, for that facility. But at a lower level, it integrates all management uh, from either cameras, uh, two-way audio devices, uh, PID sensors, access control, and, and more through uh, IOs. Now, along with this uh, simple to use interface, we have built-in analytics in the background, which take the workload off your COs uh, to give them more automated management of the system while still providing them the nice, simple, easy to use control capability that they want and need to drive the uh, user interface. Now, it really plays into the do more with less concept that we're all familiar with these days by allowing you know, a quasi-automated way of running things. Now, searching for video has never really been uh, easier or quicker because the system searches using pre-processed metadata, which is really important in correctional situations because time really is everything. Now, interfaces, they include everything from uh, using Windows hardware to a slick SendStar appliance that we call FinClient, as well as using uh, multiple hardware such as uh, phones and tablets. Now Symphony itself installs onto uh, off-the-shelf Windows-based hardware and it supports thousands of different uh, cameras and, and manufacturers as well as those that uh, support the OnVIF profiles. Now one of the significant advantages that we also have is it requires uh, the lowest server footprint which is a huge advantage by saving uh, tremendous cost and space. Now the multi-server architecture, it means a fundamentally simpler kind of system with no uh, analytic or management specific servers required and it supports embedded failover. 
And also the licenses are on a per camera basis, which means you can easily switch the license from camera to camera. And the platform also allows the VMS to be more scalable and, op and open by bringing uh, multiple sensor data. And I'm not only talking about cameras, but also PIDs devices, access control devices, um, as well as other things. Now, one central location, one software where all your data comes in. So all this really provides uh, lots of potential opportunities that you simply uh, can't do with most software systems today. So we'll look at some of our more popular analytics that work uh, really well in the uh, corrections environment. So threats to camera can be mitigated with uh, tampering and signal loss analytics. Uh, outdoor tracking can also be used in, uh, for various purposes such as uh, maybe trip, trip wire, loitering, people counting, uh, occupancy estimations. And when alarms are triggered, the system can, can send a PTZ to the proper location for viewing and then automatically track the individual's movements. Now, other analytics we have, such as uh, left or removed item detection, uh, we've got an uh, ALPR, which is our license plate uh, recognition al analytic. Uh, this is used where you know more efficient delivery notification and verification are required. And everyone is, of course, aware of uh, facial recognition and all the, the benefits or uses that come with it, especially when we talk about combining multiple technologies such as uh, video and access control and even door locks to achieve that sort of uh, multiple factor authentication. And the thin client product I mentioned earlier, it's a very unique product and it plays really well with the correctional market uh, when displaying videos in, in uh, things like guard shacks or uh, remote monitoring uh, locations for the guards. It's essentially a, uh, an appliance, it's a network-based appliance, uh, which displays uh, video. And it can decode from one to 16 streams of video all onto one monitor and provides options like your standard playback and, uh, and above and beyond uh, video wall, or sorry, video wall uh, functions. So you just get a monitor, connect standard uh, video cable to it, Connect it to the security network with a PoE connection, so it eliminates the, uh, the, the need for power. And you'll have access to any of the cameras uh, within your security network. And again, display from one to 16 uh, live video streams. And let's talk a bit more about integration, because this is really uh, critical for a uh, successful deployment. So to start, here's a really simple, uh, non-networked and uh, really non-correctional system. But in its most basic form, in this case, we have a sensor cable that's across the, uh, the fence and of course covers uh, the gate areas. And it plugs into the processor, whether it be a flex zone processor at P400, uh, an LM100 gateway and Omni tracks, and then you have all of its IOs that are connected to uh, these devices, which you're either going to uh, do camera uh, call up or you're going to do enunciation or some sort of keypad entry. It's a very basic security system. Now let's look at something um, in a more network configuration. So more representative of what you'll all be dealing with. So essentially we have the same setup, except in this case, we have LM100 luminaires that are, that are it's our lighting and uh, also sensing product. And it connects into its processor, which we call uh, the LM100 gateway. Now, same as before, we have our IOs that uh, can do uh, camera queue and uh, uh, enunciators and inputs. But in the network fashion, all of our processors or gateways in this case, they connect to the Silver or proprietary uh, network, which is called Silver Network, and then gets translated into uh, standard Ethernet and onto the uh, security network. 
So we have a PC running uh, Network Manager, which we'll talk about more in the next slide, and ultimately connects the sensor hardware to the management system being used, whether it's an SMS, a VMS, or a, uh, or a PSIM. So more on Network Manager. Think of it more as the uh, middleman between our software and our hardware. So ultimately it runs on a, on a PC or a server and it knows how to communicate with all the hardware. And on the other side, it knows how to communicate with all the software. So on one side, it connects to any SenStar hardware through either a twisted uh, wire like a RS-422 fiber optic or an Ethernet connect, uh, network. And it also supports a star or loop networks, uh, depending on how you want to configure it. It also provides the ability to manage the hardware remotely for configuring, updating, or any kind of debugging that you might want to do. Now on the other side, when we look at the software, um, it connects the hardware to our software, such as uh, StarNet2 or AIM or our Symphony product, as well as most other uh, third-party uh, software systems. And that's either through a full integration with uh, more advanced APIs or through ASCII over TCP IP or serial, uh, as well as uh, hardware IOs. Now, let's put all the sensors together and access control together uh, with Symphony. And you'll have one really fully integrated system, which means uh, one system to learn, which would be Symphony in this case, and one system to operate, which is Symphony, and one throat to choke if uh, things don't go as expected, which is SenStar. And we'll look at benefits of integrating PIDs with VMS and analytics. So especially in corrections, you need really fast and quick response. So when you integrate all of these te technologies, uh, tracking people and, and vehicles becomes way more efficient around the perimeter. So they can, they can do more with less. And with pre-alarm events, they trigger your PTZ cameras. Um, automatic camera call-ups um, can be triggered. Uh, private sense, sorry, uh, perimeter sensor and video analytics reduce uh, nuisance alarms. And improvements to that post-incident analysis can be made using uh, all the sensor data uh, mentioned above, which again includes the uh, access control as well as PIDs information with the cameras. Now, here's some of the uh, third-party integrations that, that we've uh, been doing. And this includes those that are done from our network manager to third-party systems, as well as those done from third-party systems to our, our Symphony Common app operating platform. Now, these integrations include uh, camera manufacturers through OnVIF, Profile SMG, and uh, RTSP streams and our access control partners, and some of which are all uh, listed here. Most importantly for the corrections market, however, is a sensor has experience integrating our PID sensors and Symphony with programmable logic controllers from some of the suppliers you'll also see uh, referenced here. So it's quite a long list, but there's uh, constantly new integrations being developed uh, on an ongoing basis as uh, more and more come, become available. So as the slide says, we're looking to the future. So SenStar is now looking at a different type of integration. One where not only is all the data from all the sensors simply being used to trigger events or alarms uh, in the Symphony platform, but where the platform uses all that sensor information. Now that's whether it's a camera, a fence sensor, buried sensor, thermal camera, whatever it is to make um, a better decision on what a real alarm is and more importantly, what it isn't. So we're calling this sensor fusion. Now, 
this would give us the highest uh, probability of detection while keeping that nuisance alarm um, at an even lower level than they are today. Now it'll improve it'll improve things by using uh, things like pattern recognition, uh, AI, artificial intelligence, and a more multi-sensor approach to achieve this uh, increased system level of performance to trigger these alarms. Now this is something that Symphony Common Operating Platform is really uniquely uh, positioned for in the market because of that level of integration into all types of sensors. So that's uh, pretty much the presentation. Um, if there are any questions uh, people have, uh, uh, if we could uh, go through those starting now, we probably have time for just a few of them before we uh, end the call. Zach, do you, uh, did you get anything uh, come through? Yes, thank you very much, Todd. Um, and like you mentioned, if, if we're not able to get all these questions here, we'll be sure to reach out uh, to the question askers directly. Um, but thank everybody for your time. So the, one of the first couple of questions we had, uh, we have some flex zone and fiber patrol based cabling questions. Um, is the flex zone a special coax cable or is that something that you know, a facility would be able to provide themselves? Uh, flex zone is a special cable that, uh, that we provide. It's, uh, it's called a loose core cable. So the center copper conductor is actually floating within um, essentially a plastic tube, so it, it has the ability to move around, and that's what causes the uh, the capacitance effects along the cable, so that we can measure vibrations. So yes, it is a specific cable. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, similarly, we had a question about the the type of fiber cable used, um, which so that fiber cabling can be provided uh, by you know third party. Typically, we say. Uh, you know, use gel-filled telecommunications cabling, um, and you should be, you know, all set to go. That said, of course, Sensar does provide um, that fiber as well. Um, we had a question regarding flare and if it was an active or passive signal that we're transmitting. Um, again, I think that's one I can address. So uh, flare is actually passive, so we're not actively monitoring COs as they're walking around. Uh, we only transmit that signal in a, in a use case where uh, the lanyard, the button is pressed, the pin is pulled, or if we detect someone going horizontal, indicating that they're in duress, um, to transmit that signal back to, to, to whoever live monitoring. Um, another question we had was, how are the solutions configured? Um, I think that's actually one of our strong points. Todd, if you might be able to touch on our UCM software. Right, our UCM software is um, is a control software we use that uh, can be used when you plug directly into our hardware through a USB connection for initial configuration. Um, and if network manager is in the picture and the processor is on on that network, uh, we can also uh, talk with UCM. Uh, through the whole network so you don't have to go to the potential remote site of where it's located. So it saves you some uh, time walking around the field. Okay, I think uh, we'll need to uh, close things off. So uh, as Zach said, any uh, questions that we haven't addressed, we will uh, uh, email your responses on those. And in closing, um, I guess here's some key points uh, for you to walk away with. So we have extensive uh, experience in corrections market with a massive portfolio that really touches on every security uh, need in this particular market. And we have the ability to aggregate all of our sensor technologies into one platform, which makes the system really effective, um, especially for the uh, corrections uh, staff so they, they can be used more efficiently. And our integration story, within the uh, corrections market really allows us to combine our technologies with those uh, third-party companies in order to get you kind of the best overall uh, system. So thanks again for coming and I hope the information uh, we went through today was a benefit for you and uh, your organization. 
Um, we have several upcoming seminars as well in May, and hopefully uh, you can join us for them. And if you need to contact any of your uh, regional sales managers, uh, here's a link. And, or if you need to contact uh, Zach or myself, our information is uh, back up on the screen. And remember, this is being recorded and it'll be made available on our website in the next day or two. So uh, thanks again. And uh, hopefully we'll uh, see you for one of the other seminars. Thank you and have a great day.